Welcome to another episode of Modern Block. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, please share, please comment down below if you have anything you want to add. Um, I think the biggest thing that we need to look at here with this with these team comparisons and that kind of thing is that this is the perfect example this week of you only lose your last game. Both, both all the teams really in this tournament now have to prove that they are worth it, they are the tops. So I think it's going to be a stunning, stunning weekend of rugby, exactly what we need, and it's really going to drive a lot of interest into the tournament. So yeah, let's let's get into it. So the box in Oz, um, Australia is hurting, that they're in seventh place at the moment, and I don't think it's completely fair. They have had some bad games, but also some good. Uh, their win against South Africa was a very good win, although, to be fair, both teams didn't really pitch up for the game, so we'll see how it goes. We've got Pocock and Hooper now on the combination there with Ned Hannigan, and I think that is a deadly... Uh, back three, they really lose three. They really have a, a a knack to protect the ball, a knack to get the ball, a knack to make to speed up the uh, breakdown play. Something that really works with Australia's backline. So I think that's something that they're going to focus on. Something that South Africa tried to counter against the New Zealand. So it's going to be interesting to see who can do it better. In my opinion, Australia's back three is even better than New Zealand's one. Some people is they're controversial, but especially Pocock and Hooper, I think they're the best in the game in that business. So when it, if with a combination there and, and Hooper taking leadership, I think it's going to change, alter that team hugely, and I think it's a big part of how they play. Um, with that, I think that there's a lot of uh, questions now with the Tongan Thor coming in against uh, Beast. It'll be an interesting combination. I think Beast is probably going to let some penalties go. Unfortunately, I don't think he has the kind of um, strength to face off in the beginning when they're completely fit. But over the game, Beast has got a very good um, work rate and fitness rate at the moment over, in my opinion, the Tongan floor. So with that in place, I think over the game, the scrums will start to sway to South Africa's South Africa side, especially nothing. And if, if Kitsov comes on, then they'll even better. So we'll see how that plays into it. But the, the, there's nothing, there's no question, the Tongan floor is a beast at scrum. So we'll see how that goes. On South Africa's side, Colby and uh, Conor Notche coming in. We've also got Yester Hazen and Jesse Krill moving around. There's quite a big shuffle in our back line, especially. Uh, Notche replacing Whiteley due to a groin injury, something that really is starting to plague Whiteley and something that we need to question, and, and I agree with Rossi trying to build a blood a new player in the box uh, a field for that, because I feel, unfortunately, with Dwayne Vermeulen's questionable availability and Whiteley, it makes for a very hard number eight uh, combination, actually being able to build that type three into a, into a, a, a fluid unit. So that'll be good to see if Notche can actually perform. He's a great player and done really well in the Curry Cup, done well in Super Rugby. He's very, very good on his feet. If he has space, he plays like a fullback. So it's especially, he reminds me of the heyday of like Pierre Spies and even Bob Skinstad. When they had space, they really just were able to, to move and juggle the, the ball around. And especially with their size, can make for a great option out on the wing or option as an as a angled runner in the, in the back line. So something they would definitely hope that they can uh, utilize and use. Colby, I think it was in the beginning of the, when he came on, there was a question mark on his tackling with that first missed tackle, but he made up for it late in the game and something that I think he's more and more proving to people that it doesn't matter how big you are to tackle, it's all about pride and the passion to the game and how you tackle. So I think he's a great addition at wing there. Jesse Creel moving on to outside center with Estazen. Estazen's a strong runner, especially with Pollard, uh, Pollard and it, with, uh, as fly. I think they're going to be good options there. I think there's going to be a lot of battering running, hopefully with some clever pops, because the biggest issue we seem to have is once we start batter running, we just stop. We don't actually move forward and, and, and attack that game line when the holes open from the back line, from their back line having to move back to come to, to get on side. So that'll be interesting to see. I hope JC Creel can bring some chemistry in there. He actually played well at wing, but I think with the combination of Vili Leroux still in, which is really good to see, I think that'll be a, a, quite a deadly back line in Deanti on the other side. So the biggest thing for me is just questioning their play time together. Most, especially Estes and Je uh, Jesse Peel have not played a lot together. I hope they can link up well. So yeah, I think the biggest thing for Australia is to focus on the breakdown, get get the breakdown going fast so they can get Falau into the game, Beal, all of those guys into the game. That's when, it's going to, that's when the South Africa, I think, is going to hurt. On the other side, South Africa needs to slow down the ball and use the uh, strong South African style rugby, but I think reduce the kicking. You can't kick to Falau and expect to get the ball back. I think it was 
a kind of possible to Jordi Barrett, but, but Flau, just accept you're going to lose the ball. So do not, I don't think we need to kick unless we're kicking out, and it's going to be very, very well-placed tactical kicks, something that I think we need to talk to Faf about. Faf likes to sometimes kick, and I think, his, especially when he gets excited, his kicks start getting a little weary. So we'll see how that goes. Um, another thing that a lot of people have been touting about is the 9 and 10 combination. Now, we're not really sticking to one at the moment, and there's a pros and cons to that. I mean, New Zealand have got... Uh, They've got a quite a settled pair at Aaron Smith and uh, 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 Burden Barrett, but also Perinara also comes in often there. And I think that it's actually not a bad thing to have the ability to swap them out. The biggest thing is that you need to have them that both go at it. As Jack of all trades, master of none question has to come in here. You can't, we have to have two world-class players that are swapping out for a long time. Otherwise, that can be a, a de detriment. So I think it is good to see Pollard consistently playing and Fuff consistently playing. But the biggest question now comes in is, one game, Faf can't play the next, and it, does that cost us a World Cup? Does that cost us a tournament? So I do think we need to blood some more players. I'd like to see, I think, Emperor Professor Peters this week's uh, replacement scrummy. I'd like to see him come on if we're doing okay and bring him, get him, blood him onto the team properly because Faf is playing a lot of 80-minute games, and we've got a question whether we're not actually, we aren't actually able to bring in new pairings there. And actually, with M Pompey, it does play with Pollard at the Bulls. So it does help, but I think, unfortunately, they haven't played a lot together even there because even Van Sales are starting bull scrubbing. So we'll see how that goes. On the New Zealand-Argentina side, um, I think New Zealand... I, it's actually quite funny. I was reading an article where Buffoli was pretty much stating that he's he's quite upset that South Africa won that game. He feels uh, South Africa has put them in a hard place with New, New Zealand coming to prove what they want to do. But I think that's a good and a bad thing. When a team is desperate, when a team wants to prove instead of just play the style they normally play, it can actually cost them. So I think that Argentina, you should utilize this doubt in their mind, that, that question mark that they've got, and utilize it. With Sanchez's long range kicking and his stunning uh, ball skills at the moment and his ability to put players into space, I think he's probably one of the best flyers in the world and they need to utilize that and make sure that they can get into those spaces. I know that Moana is not playing this week. Uh, he's got, he got injured in previous week and that is a question mark. I'd like to see I really liked how he played in the uh, previous games against New Zealand. He really questioned their ability to attack and also made up a lot of slip tackles. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, they don't have Kieran Reid or Brody Retallick, a big hole in their leadership to a, to a point because New Zealand does have a lot of very, very experienced players. So we'll see how that affects their gameplay and affects their uh, style. Sonny Bill Williams coming into centre is always nice to see. I enjoy his style of play and some of the news Argentina really have to question. Both teams, it's quite funny. I feel South Africa has got a very different style from the other teams. New Zealand uh, have got a, a, they have a very strong battering front pack, and I think that is also why Argentina brought in um, some uh, a player from France to actually handle that with, uh, I'm just give me a second to remember the name. Uh, oh yeah, Romario Her Herrera, there we go. Herrera coming in from France. And it's, actually, it's nice to see Argentina actually bring up their... Uh, relax their whole rule about playing uh, players from Europe. I know that they've got a strong rule about that and they often don't because they don't want to have players exit. So similar problem South Africa has. So we'll see how that affects things. But I'd like, it's good to see Argentina starting to blood some players for the World Cup from overseas. Because the problem they have is that they play for three years with players from local and then they bring a, bring a pretty much a 50-50 local and a foreign team into a World Cup and they haven't played together. So it's something that actually hurts them quite badly. So it's good to see that they're starting to at least players that they'd like to bring into the World Cup, let them play with the team, especially at the moment that they're such a high, they're doing very well. And I, if I was a European player, I'd actually question whether I'm even selected for the World Cup next year at the current style they're playing. Um, yeah, Sonny Bill Williams, stunning player and really going to, uh, I think, hurt Argentina, but at the same time Argentina has got a very good scramble defense, something that will help them a lot against the Australia game and previous games, so it'll be good to see how they can scramble against those deadly pops from Sonny Bill Williams. So yeah, I think both games are quite interesting. Argent I, I, I think, I hope Argentina can put it. I know, sorry New Zealand fans, but I do think that there's, it's going to be interesting to see, and it keeps the tournament alive for another week. Uh, we've, got to, we've got to respect the fans, and I would like to go and see uh, have that game come to the last one between the All Blacks and South Africa here locally. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for uh, joining me for another video. Please share, subscribe, and yeah, if you have any comments or any additions you want to add, please put it down below. Thanks guys.